so get out. So I started leaving. I'm walking down the stairs of the apartment. I'm down to my father's part. I said, wait a minute, where am I going to go? This is my father's house. I just got thrown off of my own property. <laughs> what happened here? So I went to get to Mohammed and I woke him up. I said, come, you and me, we got to talk. Come with me. And we went outside the house and we walked those country roads in Middle Othian, Texas until the time for the, dawn, uh, the sun to come up at dawn. And all that time I talked to him about what's it like to be a Muslim? How do you have to believe? What do you have to do? Let me hear all of it now. And no more playing a game. I'm not debating. I just want to know. Just tell me. Just tell me what's Islam. I need to know what I need to do. And he told me everything and I realized that this is it. I got to make a decision. This is a big deal though. And he told me, okay, this is up to you. You have to go make a choice for yourself. I can't help you. I said, oh my God. So when he was praying Fajr, I decided, I've been watching this man praying this direction with his head on the ground. It's so beautiful to see a man humble himself, put his head on the ground to the Rabbil Alameen. I said, oh my God, let me try that. So I sneaked off somewhere where nobody could see me. Illallah. And then I found the place, a board there, you know, and I bowed down on the ground and I put my head down on the ground on that board there. And I was, and by the way, I'm pretty good at speaking, especially in prayers. I used to make so long a prayer, they wouldn't let me say the prayer at Thanksgiving because the food would be cold. Okay? So, but I put my head on the ground and only these words came, no more words, just this. Oh God, guide me. That's it. And I was thinking, well, I got to say more than that. Nothing. Oh God, if you're there, guide me. That's it. After a while, I sat up and I looked around. There wasn't any fancy rainbow. It wasn't birds flying around. There was no big signs from above. There was no music, angels, harps, nothing like this. It was just a cloudy day in Texas. But inside, I could realize I had to make some changes. To me, that's what I need to do. There's the problem, it's inside of me. Within a few minutes, it became clear what I needed to do. And I had to develop an idea of how to pull this off. I talked to my wife, talked to my father, I made a bath, and at 10 o'clock that morning, in Middle Othian, Texas, I went in front of this man named Muhammad, and this new man named Yahya, who used to be the priest. And I said, Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. Immediately after that, my wife did her shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. A few months later, my father did his shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. Step by step by step, we saw so many people enter into them. We wanted to tell the whole world what is Islam. We wanted everybody to know the real Islam. I said, how could this escape our knowledge? How could we not know about this great and wonderful thing called Islam? And it looks like all we got to do is just tell the people. I went to the imam of the masjid there and I told him, let's, let's tell the people. Then I found out something else about us as Muslims. And that's why we've got this convention here right now. This is why we have the exhibition. So you're going to use this week to learn how you can become, inshallah, the best Muslim you can be and how you can show the real Islam to the people that are not Muslim. This is your duty. This is your duty. This is your language. This is your people. Just as it's my duty to give the message to my people and my language. And so uh, the same way, it's your duty to give the message to your people. Allah will not ask you if they made shahada, but He will ask you if you delivered the message. Alhamdulillah today, I can tell you with no doubt in my mind, we have seen thousands of people give shahada. Several hundred at a time. And I don't do it through debates. But I don't need to debate any Christian. I was a Christian. I am a Muslim. If you want, I can give you both sides. Easy. Okay? I'll play both parts. I'll be the Christian and tell you this, and then I'll be the Muslim and give the answer.
and there won't be any argument. And I've done that so many times. And let me share one story with you before I end. I'm going to leave now. Inshallah. I was telling the brothers today that I was asked to give a talk in a church in Hagerstown, Virginia. uh, Hagerstown, Maryland, just outside of Virginia. This was in 1999. And I went there and I gave a talk in the church on Sunday. Because I know how to address the people. How many years was I a Christian? 50 years? I know what they want to hear. Get them ready. And they said, oh, wow, this is normal preaching. But then when I came to the part, la ilaha illallah, I stayed on la ilaha illallah until they said, yes, that makes sense, it makes sense. There was one old lady that she was saying yes. Afterwards she said, yes, but I just don't want to do it the way you're telling me. Okay? But guess what else happened? Two people did shahada right there. Hello? In the church. In front of their preacher. They said, yes, we agree. We like this. We want to know more. And we say there's only one God to worship. Shadu la ilaha illallah. In front of the preacher. And one of them was his daughter. I took them to the masjid. And they did shahada in the masjid that afternoon. A Sunday afternoon. And later the boy, he married the girl. There are Muslims living there now. Now, may I ask you a question? If I would debate and argue with this preacher and made him look stupid, would he ever bring me back again? No. I'm going to ask you a question. If you were at a place and you saw somebody change their religion to another religion in the temple of that religion, and the father was the priest there, what would you think? Is that man ever going to call me again? Do you think he'd call me again? Three months later, he called me again. Come back again. We really enjoyed it so much. I said, how's your daughter doing? I want to remind him, see what he's going to say. He said, well, she's doing fine. She likes Islam. It's very nice, lovely. She treats us so good. You know, we're amazed at her personality. We love you guys. Could you please come back again? And I did, alhamdulillah. So I'm just showing you that it's not guidance from me, not guidance from you. It's guidance from Allah. Allah guides whom He wills. Whom He wills. So we ask Allah to guide me, all of us, and all the people. And whoever He guides, they'll be fine. But whoever Allah doesn't guide, (laughs) they got a problem. Serious problem. Our job here is to do one thing. Communicate the true message. If the people don't want it, That's your choice. That's their choice. You don't have to take it. But it's our responsibility in putting this on. All the scholars that are here, it's their responsibility to tell us what's the truth in Islam and let us see for ourselves. And that's what we're going to try to do through this week. So I need you guys to listen to me. You have to participate. Your side of it. Your side of it is to show up every day. And your side of it is to bring other people أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ فَوَيْلٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ